Hi everyone, this is our lecture on biologic agents, so let's get started. To get a clinical perspective, let's look at a quick flash case. Let's say a 68-year-old woman, recently diagnosed with osteoporosis, presents to the clinic for a follow-up. She has started treatment with a bisphosphonate, but she saw a commercial for a drug that ended with MAB that can be used for osteoporosis too. And she's curious about how it works and if it would be better, though she can't recall the name. Let's keep this in mind as we go through the lecture. Our learning objectives for this lecture are to classify biologic agents by mechanism of action and list examples of biologic agents. Now, biologic agents are exploding in the market. Tons of new drugs are coming out, so I find understanding the nomenclature very helpful. So first, let's talk about the drugs that end in MAB. MAB is actually an acronym. All drugs that end in MAB, or with the stem MAB, are named to tell us that they are M for monoclonal and AB for antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies are used to target overexpressed cell surface receptors. Now, if MAB is the stem, let's continue to talk about substems. Now, we're going to use rituximab here for an example that we see on the next line, and you'll see that the lines also match up. So, the first substem, which is closer to the stem, is called the source substem. And it tells us where we got this monoclonal antibody from. In this case, the XI tells us that it is a chimera or cross between species. For example, a human and a mouse. Now the substem before that is called the target substem and tells us what our monoclonal antibody is targeting. So in this case, the TU in rituximab tells us it's targeting a tumor or cancer. Lastly, for our example of rituximab is the prefix RI, which is variable. So if we look to the next biologic agent in this table, bevacizumab, going from end to beginning, we know it's a MAB, so it's a monoclonal antibody with ZU for its source stem, which stands for humanized. And CI is the target substem, telling us there is some sort of cardiovascular type of target. Is this true? Do we know what bevacizumab is used for? Well, its clinical use is for colorectal cancer, renal cell carcinoma, non-small cell lung cancer, and angioproliferative retinopathy by targeting VEGF, or vascular endothelial growth factors. And there's a hint in the prefix. This helps you to remember that it is targeting blood vessel formation. Now, the next example, denosumab, is a MAB, or monoclonal antibody, with U as the source substem, signifying human, and OS as the target substem which means bone. Can you recall when we use denosumab? If you can't, take a guess. Yep, we use it for osteoporosis, which is why this may have been the one in our flash case that the patient heard about on a commercial. If you look up monoclonal antibody nomenclature, there are some really very helpful charts that helped me learn these drugs in a more efficient way than trying to memorize them individually. I think it's kind of a cool naming system. Okay, next we have drugs that end in IB, or IB, which are small molecular inhibitors that target intracellular molecules. Just like our monoclonal antibodies, they have a similar naming structure. They all have the stem, IB, but then their substem is related to their function, which you can see in red. Now, while these are all very high yield, one particularly high yield one is imatinib. Do you remember any uses for imatinib? One condition is in patients with chronic myelogenous leukemia. Imatinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor of BCRABL, the Philadelphia chromosome fusion gene seen in CML. 
Our next ending or stem is sept, like in the TNF alpha antagonist, etanercept, which is a receptor fusion protein produced by recombinant DNA. Sometimes the mnemonic etanercept intercepts TNF is used. Etanercept is used in rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, and ankylosing spondylitis. And the last category we'll talk about are the interleukin receptor modulators that conveniently have kin in their name. They are agonists and antagonists of interleukin receptors. Well, how can you tell whether or not it's an agonist or antagonist? Well, anakinra, for example, ends in RA, which can help you remember R for receptor and A for antagonist. Those that are agonist and are similar to interleukins will also have leukin in the name, like Aldus leukin. Let's do a flash quiz. What type of biologic agent is celecoxib? Well, celecoxib ends in ib, so it's one of our small molecule inhibitors, which targets intracellular molecules. Can you remember what it inhibits? Yes, it's cyclooxygenase 2, or COX-2. Well, let's return to this case. Bisphosphonates like alendronate are useful in osteoporosis by inhibiting osteoclastic activity. But what about the MAB she's hearing about on the television commercial? It ends in MAB, so what is it? Yep, it would be a monoclonal antibody. Can you remember which one we talked about for osteoporosis? Yep, it likely could have been denosumab, which targets rank L. Well, we've made it to the end. What's the bottom line? Biologic agents can be classified by nomenclature, specifically their stem or ending, which often describes its function. Examples include monoclonal antibodies, which end in MAB, like rituximab, small molecule inhibitors, which end in IB, like imatinib, receptor fusion proteins, which end in sept, like etanercept, interleukin receptor modulators, which end in kin, like Aldus leukin. Well, that's all I have for you here. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and it'll give you the opportunity to submit a comment if you have any feedback or questions. Thanks for joining me. Study hard.